Actually, we already know, back in college, I studied biology and I majored in microbiology. So I had to study scientific names, endless terminologies, complex pathways, you name it. There was a lot of recall and memorization involved and honestly, I would have struggled to remember such a massive amount of information without Anki. I used it for years, I pretty much lived on it to get through all my exams. So today, I'll be walking you through the basics of Anki, how I used Anki, and how you can set it up for your study sessions. Now before anything else, I want to talk about what Anki is. Anki is a flashcard tool that integrates both active recall and spaced repetition, both of which are very, very important in learning and memory. I've talked about these two study techniques in depth in a previous video, so you might find it helpful to watch that first. But basically, instead of you just passively reading or highlighting your lecture notes, which can be a tendency of most students, Anki allows you to create flashcards in a way that's more efficient and effective to actively test your memory. What's even great Great is Anki learns how you learn. So it spaces out your review sessions based on how well you know the material. You don't have to decide when to study each card anymore because Anki already sets up the optimal time to study each card to reinforce long-term memory. You do have to make the cards by yourself. You may have to tweak the settings once, but once you've set that up, you can let Anki handle the rest. So let's set up Anki. You can download Anki from this site, apps.ankiweb.net. I have all the relevant links in the description below for your convenience. Now, if you scroll down to the bottom of the page, you can see all the download links for the different platforms. There are links available for Windows, for Mac, and even for your mobile devices. So once you've downloaded the app, you have to create your Anki web account because this makes it possible to save your decks and also to sync your decks across all your devices. Once you've set that up, you should have this default homepage of Anki. Now before we talk about the mechanisms of Anki, how to create the cards, how to study with Anki, I'll first walk you through the layout of the app because Anki has has many tools at our disposal and this can get confusing especially for beginners so it's important that we first establish at least the basic tools that are available and what their purposes are so at the top we have five buttons first we have decks which i like to think of as folders each folder or deck contains flashcards grouped and organized together next is the add button which allows you to create the flashcards the browse button is used if you want to look for a specific card within a deck stats basically show you your performance how many cards are still due how many cards you've reviewed, etc, etc. And the sync button is again to sync your decks across your devices. Further at the top, Anki has a menu bar and the only tools I frequently ever use in this menu bar are the preferences and the tools tab. I'll go over both of these later on as we go through the video, but this menu bar is really just for the more general tools within Anki. Now that you're familiar with the layout and the tools within Anki, let's talk about decks in detail. Again, think of decks as folders. So each of these decks or folders group cards together. You can group cards based on your courses, your lessons, or whichever criteria you deem best to categorize your cards. In my case, I made decks for each of my courses and I renamed each deck to the year and semester in brackets followed by the course code and then the course title. This naming convention makes it so much easier for me to find the right deck especially when I'm looking for older lessons. Now within these decks I've created sub decks for each week of the course. I did this because at our university each week is usually focused on a different lesson so instead of having all of the lessons in one big deck which can be overwhelming breaking it down by week allows me to review the lessons in smaller, more manageable chunks. So if I'm having a hard time on week two's lesson, I can study just that. If I need to study week four, I can also do so. Also, this allows me to review each week's lesson in its own spaced repetition cycle. So as the semester progresses, each week's lesson gets scheduled at just the right intervals. For example, I can focus on week two's lesson early on in the semester and I can focus on week four's lesson later on, exactly when I need it. So how do I create decks and Sub decks. All you have to do is click on create deck, rename it to your naming convention. Let's just use my naming convention for now as an example. So let's write the year and semester in brackets, the course code, the course title, and then you have your deck. Now to create sub decks, all you have to do is again create a deck and then drag that into the deck you want the sub deck to be enclosed in. As simple as that. You can even go a step further to create sub decks within these sub decks, so it's totally up to you on how you want to organize your cards. Now, beside these decks, you can see three states for your cards new, learning, and due. So, this basically shows you how many cards are new, learning, and due for a specific review day. New cards are those you haven't studied at all. Learning cards 
cards are those you've studied recently but are still in the process of being learned and due cards are those you finished learning now if you finished learning these cards why then are they still classified as due essentially why do you still need to review these cards the explanation for this can be a bit technical so i'll try best to explain it as simply as i can so once you've mastered your learning cards over time they become due cards these are cards you've mastered but again the goal of anki is to reinforce long-term memory so although you know these cards well enough although you've mastered these cards they won't completely disappear in your reviews they will still appear over time to reinforce long-term memory but compared to learning cards the review interval for due cards is much greater or much longer so they'll appear further into the future so let's say if learning cards appear after two days due cards appear after 10 days or after a month now there is a feature in anki where you can create filtered decks so when you go to the tools tab on the menu bar you can see create filtered deck and this has been so so useful in my review sessions and I'll tell you why. Filter decks offer the flexibility to temporarily pull out specific cards from a deck based on tags, due dates, or other criteria. So it's like creating a custom study session from the decks you already have. So sometimes there are days when I just want to review my learning and do cards. Days when maybe my mental load is already so heavy that I can't accommodate studying any more new cards. All I have to do is create a filter deck. The filter is by default already set to do cards, so I just increase the limit to my desired number of cards cards to review and voila i have a custom deck containing only the cards that are learning and due for that specific review day if you want to study only new cards on the other hand you can set the filter to is new and anki will create a deck containing only new cards now once you're done with this filter deck the review session syncs back to your main deck so your progress stays updated now let's talk about cards in anki the cards you create aren't limited to only one format you're not just limited to having questions in front and answers to the back in fact there are many types of cards you can create with anki i won't be able to discuss every type of anki card but i'll cover the ones i use most frequently okay first we have the basic card this is the simplest type of card you can create with anki where you have a question or a prompt in front and the answer at the back so for example i can write the powerhouse of the cell for the front of the card and i can write the answer mitochondria at the back of the card so when i study this card let me just go back it essentially asks me what the powerhouse of the cell is and when i hit the space bar to reveal the answer it shows me mitochondria next we have the basic and reverse card so if in the basic card we create only one card in the basic and reverse card we are able to automatically create two cards in one go it automatically creates a card that is in the reverse order of the basic card let me show you how that works so again we can write the powerhouse of the cell in front and then mitochondria at the back when we try to study this card it shows me the front first what is the powerhouse of the cell and then we answer with mitochondria and then we also have another card which shows me the back this time so when it shows me mitochondria i have to answer with the description of the organelle which is that it's the powerhouse of the cell next is the closed deletion card which works similar to fill in the blanks so for example i can write the sentence mitochondria are powerhouses of the cell i will highlight the part of the sentence that i want to be asked about i can click command shift c for those who are using mac and it creates a closed deletion this closed deletion will be asked in one card c1 i can create another closed deletion for powerhouse and this will show up in another card c2 so when we study this card as you can see, the part where we added a closed deletion stays hidden, which prompts you to fill in the blanks. Now, if there isn't enough information to answer this question and you want to add more context, you can go back to editing this card and you can do that simply by clicking on E on your keyboard. And then you can add two columns within the closed deletion followed by the description. So for mitochondria, I can write organelle. For powerhouse, I can write function of the organelle. So when we study this card, it shows me that this specific organelle is the powerhouse of the cell and when we move on to the next card it shows me that mitochondria are blank of the cell which asks this time for the function of the organelle now let's go back to editing this card again in closed deletion cards you can add more information on the extra field so since we're talking about mitochondria i can grab one of the structural diagrams of mitochondrion copy that and then paste that in this extra
extra feel. So every time I study this card, I can familiarize myself with the structure of a mitochondrion. Aside from structures or diagrams, I can even add explanations in this extra field. So if I'm studying about a complex disease or complex pathway, I can add a more in-depth explanation of that disease or that pathway in this extra field. Since this card is solely just talking about mitochondria being powerhouses of the cell, I can just add an explanation here for why that is so. And every time I review this card, I can familiarize myself with the structure and also the function of a mitochondrion. Next is the image occlusion card, which is my favorite, especially for learning structures, diagrams, or any visual content. I use this mainly for anatomy diagrams, and how this works is you click on this button, add image occlusion, you select an image, and then you cover specific areas or parts of the diagram by simply clicking and then dragging over those areas. Now, if you want multiple labels to show up in one card, say those parts are grouped together, you can hold the shift button on your keyboard, select the labels you want to be grouped in one card, right click, and then group. I can do the same for the remaining ones. Hold shift, select, and then Group. So when I study these cards, I am tasked to label the hidden parts. As you can see, the labels we grouped together showed up in this card and the others show up in the next card. And now we move on to the review settings. Now that we've hopefully understood how decks work, how to make cards, it is of equal if not of far significant importance to tweak your review settings to your learning style. In Anki, you can change how cards are reviewed and the pacing of your reviews. Now as much as it is tempting to use the default review settings in Anki, those aren't guaranteed to work for everybody. You can try it out for a few days, for a few weeks, get the feel of it, but changing the review settings to how you personally study is so so important so that you'll be able to maximize the functionalities of Anki and so that Anki works for you. Not gonna lie, understanding how Anki settings work probably gave me more migraines than I anticipated and although I've spent a great deal of time understanding how these settings work, I'm probably still not the best person to fully break them down. I will still show you what settings I have but I've linked some great YouTube videos that go over these settings in detail and that I know will be super helpful for you because they've been such helpful guides for me. I will leave it up to the experts to explain them clearly and comprehensively. Make sure to watch the videos I've linked in the description first. Make sure to try and understand them before changing anything because changing these settings incorrectly might affect Anki scheduling in a bad way, in a way that might not work for you. So if you hover over the rightmost side of your deck, you can see a gear icon click on that, click on options, and then you can see all the review settings you can tweak for your decks. These are my review settings. You can save this if you want. You can use this as a reference side by side while watching the videos I've linked just so you have a few ideas on how you want to maybe pace your reviews. Aside from this, you can also set a time limit during your review sessions. Now, this is part of the classic Anki deck option. So to access this, again, hover over the gear icon, Hold shift on your keyboard and click on options. Go to the general tab and then you can see the options for setting a time limit. I've set my time limit to two minutes. So if I answer longer than that, the answer will automatically appear and whether I answer hard or good will be disregarded. And before that timer is up, I also have an alert set at the one minute and 30 second mark. And this is very, very useful because it encourages me to think faster. I don't have time to be distracted. I can focus on answering the question or the prompt with Within the set time limit. Now, customization in Anki doesn't just stop with customizing your decks, your cards, and your review settings. You can also customize Anki's interface. If you go to the menu bar, preferences, you can see the more general settings you can tweak in Anki. In the appearance tab, for instance, you can choose between light or dark mode. You can also change the interface style and you can choose to eliminate a few distractions you might have when you're using Anki. Under the review tab, I have my next day starting at four hours past midnight. And this is because there are days when I study late at night. And when you study your deck, again, this still depends on the settings you have. But when you study your deck, you don't just run through it once and be done for the day. Day. Because learning cards will still appear depending on your set interval, even if you've run through the entire deck. In my case, I have my interval set at 15 minutes and then at 30 minutes. So if I click on again, I will see the card after 15 minutes. If I click good, it will appear after 30 minutes. So even if I finish my entire deck in let's say 20 minutes, I may and I will still have learning cards that are set to appear after 30 minutes. So I set my next starting day at 4 a.m. just so I can get all my reviews done for the 
day before starting my next review session. Within this review tab, you can also customize the shortcut keys you use when you're answering cards. I just use the default keys. So if I want to see the card again, I can click on the number one on my keyboard. If I answered good, I can just click the number three on my keyboard. I will leave it up to you to explore all the other settings you can change within this tab and those under editing, syncing, and backups. Now let's talk about add-ons. Add-ons are additional features that enhance the functionality of Anki. They're like extensions or plugins that expand what Anki can do. For example, I have this review heat map below my decks, which is basically a calendar view of my daily review stats. Darker means there are more cards reviewed, lighter means there are less cards reviewed. Another extension I have is the image occlusion enhance, which is the card we talked about earlier where we cover or hide certain areas or parts of a diagram. And there are so many more add-ons that you can use within Anki. There are add-ons that change the wallpaper within Anki. There are add-ons that gamify the process of answering your cards. So how do we get these add-ons? Again, there are so many add-ons available for Anki and almost all of them are available when you search them up. So let's say you want this review heat map. You can search up review heat map Anki add-on. Go to this site scroll down to the bottom of the page and you can see a code which is what you'll use to add this add-on onto Anki. Copy that code, go to your Anki app, go to the tools tab in the menu bar, add-ons, get add-ons, simply paste the code you copied and then you have your add-on. I think that pretty much sums up the fundamentals of Anki. Anki is, I think, still the best app to integrate both active recall and space repetition in your reviews. There is a bit of a learning curve, but it honestly just takes a few weeks. If you have any other questions about Anki, just leave them in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you so, so much for sticking around. I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye!